Hey guys, this is Matt, aka Turner Tech, and I'm coming to you from the studio for the last week. That's right, like I told you, I've been filming here in the studio at my work, and because uh, the pandemic's starting to wind down and the phases are changing here in our area, uh, this studio, it will be put back together, but in a different way. So I don't know if I'll be filming here, but like I told you last week, if you guys uh, convinced me that I should keep doing this, um, I got some things coming ahead. We're looking at trying to do some studio space in the house, which I'm very excited for and uh, thankful to my wife for being the one that's actually kind of pushing that and back that in the first place. So just with her support of the channel as well. So, uh, so exciting things coming, but unfortunately, like I said, this cool setup that we have here may not be for next week, but it will come in time. We'll uh, obviously I'm going to do something to make it look great for you guys still and keep the quality there. So today's video back to you here on a Friday again, and we're, we'll just keep doing this. Don't know how long, but as long as you guys keep liking the channel, the channel keeps growing. And as long as I keep having fun with it, we're going to keep doing this. And I'm so glad you guys uh, supported me in that. You were very supportive in the comments and the likes. Uh, that was the most liked video so far, so that's exciting. Um, it, we gained a lot of new followers through that. I think when I first started at least writing that, um, that video, um, I think there was like 31 or 33 followers, and now we're either almost at 50 or over 50. I haven't checked it today. So that's great. Uh, so we almost made it through May with the with the 50. So that's, that's really great. Um, we're coming in, you know, once we get over that 50, it's home run stretch towards 100. We can get that custom link for the channel and really move forward. So this week's video, top five reasons why you should buy a Nintendo Switch. So this is kind of geared at, uh, I guess if you don't own a game console, yes, this is a video for you as well, but I'm kind of gearing this towards those who have Xbox Ones, uh, PS4s, um, even there's new consoles coming out at the end of the year. Why should I buy a Switch right now? Like, why should I buy it at all if I'm one of these uh, console gamers or PC gamers? So here's the top five reasons why. These are, of course, my top five reasons. You're going to see lots of different opinions on the Switch. And I was, as I was doing my own research for this video, I was knowing there's like top three, top eights, top 11s. I'm like, I'm just going to do a top five. I feel like that's pretty consistent with what everyone's expecting and a top list. So top five reasons why you should buy a Nintendo Switch. So number one is portability, portability. I said that portability, learn to talk, Matt. So portability, obviously a PS4, you can't pick up in your hand and take it with you. So that's the number one reason why to get this to me because it's portable. So I can take it anywhere I want in my house right now, especially during COVID-19, I've been stuck at my desk six, seven, eight, nine hours at a time. And I just get to this moment where it's like, I just want to get away from this. My desk used to just be a place for me to do like side work and game at. I have a really nice monitor. I like gaming on a smaller screen. Um, maybe I'll do another video on that sometime. Uh, why I game the way I game, but um, I just get to this point where I want to get away from there. So, but I still want to play Fortnite, but my PS4 Pro is connected to that monitor. I don't really feel like detaching that whole setup and carrying it to our family room and plugging into the main TV for the house. Like, I just don't want to have to do that. Well, I can just take this downstairs. I can play Fortnite or whatever game I'm playing, you know, whether it's a exclusive on here or not an exclusive, competitive, casual, doesn't matter. I can now take it with me anywhere. So. Yeah, the portability is obviously the number one reason why you should get a Nintendo Switch. Second reason why is it's, excuse the punniness here, but the switchability of the Switch. So, I just made it a desktop console. Like, that to me, this is one of the coolest ideas. The Wii U, big swing and a miss. They were trying to kind of do what this is doing, but it just didn't work that way and it was disappointing and you were always confused and is it an accessory to a Wii or what is it? They finally got it figured out with the Switch. That I just cannot, this is so cool to me. So um, I'm not sure what resolution it is like this. I mean, for this screen size, it's a perfect resolution. It's, it's not full HD. I probably have it right here on the screen right now, whatever that size is, but it's a really high resolution screen for its size. But when you put it into the dock mode, and you're playing on your TV, it now can do 1080 60. So not 4K, but still doing full HD at 60, up to 60 frames per second. That still to me is a big milestone. Um, yes, this is not as good as a PS4 or Xbox One, but if you remember when PS4 and Xbox One uh, launched, even at full HD, the Xbox One, the original launch console, really struggled at 60 frames per second in 1080. The Switch can do that. 
So that, that is so impressive to me that this little console is capable of doing that. That's just so impressive. So portability, switchability, and the switchability too, it kind of goes into even your gameplay. So um, not only can you switch from handheld and of course now this thing, look up a video sometime on the kickstand. I, I'm not, I don't use it a lot in tabletop mode, so mine's not broken, so I'm not gonna show you how easy it is, but this thing pops off so easy. But you can use it tabletop mode, so you can take your Joy-Cons off of it, you know, and play like this with your Joy-Cons, or like this, or however you're playing with the Joy-Con, and the Joy-Con itself, so many different ways to play with it, like this in handheld mode, or in, desk, in tabletop mode, you can play with them separate like this, you can play with them like this, you know, it just does so many things. You can put them in the grip and play with them like this. So it's more like a standard like Xbox controller. I find this thing to be a little uncomfortable though. So I use this more just so that if I'm playing with friends, it gives you another controller now. If you need the whole, like you need both left and right Joy-Con set up for your, their controllers. Like if you're playing Smash Brothers, um, just a great extra controller for them. Um, uh, it's a little annoying though, little, uh, little hit at Nintendo on this one. They don't ship it with the charging grip. So Nintendo, like you make it, it's only 30 bucks. Why not on all new Switches ship, just put the charging version in there? Uh, just, just throwing it out there because it's really annoying when you're playing like this and they die. Because now if you don't have the charging grip, you got to take them out of this and put them in the Switch and either go to portable mode or just leave them in there to charge. So that's a little annoying. So don't know why Nintendo does that. But anyways, and of course they have the Pro Remote too. So this honestly, to me, this is one of the best um, uh, console remotes that you can get. Don't get confused with the Pro. That does not mean this is not like a like a competitive video game controller. It, it's not. There's no programmable buttons on the back, no customizable joysticks. It is what it is. It's Pro for the Switch because you normally just have these Joy-Cons. So if you want something nicer than the Joy-Cons, you have this. The Rumble's better. It still has the NFC reader on it like the right Joy-Con does. So you can still do your Amiibo if you're into the Amiibo. Um, it's just, it's ergonomic, it's really great. This is honestly one of my favorite video game controllers. I, I, I almost, I think there's an adapter you can get so you can use this on other consoles. I've been tempted to do that. If I didn't have a scuff controller for my PS4, I may do that because I think this is more comfortable than the PS4 controller. Just saying. You might not agree, that's your opinion. One annoying thing though with this and why it's like, okay, you called a pro remote and it can't do this. There's no audio jack. And the, and the switch won't let you by default without buying some adapter for it, hook up Bluetooth headphones to it. So unless you got a wireless, USB wireless headphone, which almost all of them work by the way, like even Sony's gold headset works with it. I know cause I have one. Uh, you just plug it into one of the front USB ports on this. And now you can use that wireless headset uh, while you're playing in desktop mode in docked mode, I guess you, I should call it. But let's say you just have a pair of wireless earbuds or your favorite headset. Like mine is my Corsair H60s. I love my Corsair H60s. I mentioned them in another video I've made already. Um, I can't use them when I'm playing on my Switch unless I'm playing portable or tabletop mode because I can only plug them in right here. On the whole console, the only audio input is this one. That's very disappointing, um, especially compared to PS4 and Xbox One. Um, but this is Nintendo's best attempt at making a multiplayer um, online console, and it's the best attempt they've had so far. I think the sky's only the limit. This shows that they they can do it. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen in the P in the Switch Pro that's been rumored. Hopefully that is a real thing and does come out. I'm hoping they do things like fix online multiplaying Chad and they fix the audio jacks. And this is not this is not a video about all the complaints. Maybe I'll do a complaint video about Switch as well sometime. So anyways, portability, switchability. So games, I kind of have two points on games. So first of all is both competitive and casual. So um, once again, I, I understand not all games are on this. Like if you're a hardcore Call of Duty, and this is why to me, this is not the only console you have. If you're not go if you're just buying a console though, and you want everything, this is the console to me you should buy for all the reasons I'm giving right now. But if you're an Xbox One or PS4 owner, this is why these reasons are why you should own it in addition to those. Because obviously, like I like playing Call of Duty, I can't do that on here. There, there's no Warzone on Switch. Warzone wouldn't work on Switch. Switch is not powerful enough. It takes 200 gigabytes of your PlayStation 4 or Xbox One's hard drive. There, it's just not gonna, this was not designed for that, at least not yet. Maybe someday we'll get there, I don't know, maybe with the Switch Pro. 
Um, we'll see. But uh, it, this is density. I'm not going to, obviously, it's a little bit more on the casual side. There still are competitive games on it, though, guys. There's still are hardcore games. You can play Overwatch on this. You can play Fortnite on this. They have, there's a couple other um, mobile ports that are also on the other consoles that are like uh, some knockoffs of those. There's Paladin. Paladin is a um, is an Overwatch knockoff. Uh, Paladin's a lot of fun. So there's there are competitive games on here. And even with the casual games, there's lots of roguelikes on there. So in roguelites, like every time you die, the game resets. So like it's a whole new map, whole new dungeon. It's not the same each time. Dead Cells is one of those. I've mentioned that in another video. Um, Dead Cells is not easy. Dead Cells is super competitive. Yeah, it, like I'm, I'm not competitive in playing against others, but it's a very challenging, that's the word I should use, very challenging game to play. It's not easy. Yes, it's 16 bits and yes, it's casual because of that, but it's a really great game and it's just feels right on Switch. Yes, can you get that on other platforms? Of course you can. Games like that just feel like they belong here. I don't know if it's because of Nintendo being on the back of the console and us just being used to those type of games being on Nintendo branded consoles, but they just feel right on here. And let's not forget to Mario and all their other exclusives, Nintendo exclusives. I've been playing Animal Crossing nonstop since I got it. I just got it a couple weeks ago. I'm sure I already have well over 100 hours into it. I'm, I, it's absolutely addicting. Uh, they, and that's only on Switch. So you have all of Nintendo's titles as well, which they just, they've continued to get better. And Nintendo shows that they, Super Mario Odyssey is amazing. Honestly, Zelda Breath of the Wild, that is reason alone to buy a Switch. Reason alone right there. So you first of all, have portability, switchability, competitive and casual games, ported games. So you have your favorite game you've been wanting to pick back up again on PS3 or Xbox 360 and you just don't want to pull that thing out or you sold it and don't have it anymore. Or those games are just old and tired and you want to play like a remastered version of it. Tons of ports on Switch. There's even now a lot of port that I shouldn't say a lot, but some ports coming from other consoles like The Witcher 3. That, that game is, I can't believe they somehow figured out how to make The Witcher 3 run on the Switch. That's right, the Switcher 3 mobile. Did they turn down all the textures? Yes. Did they have to like simplify the graphics down a lot? Yes, but still it runs and runs smooth on the Switch. It's not like crashing all the time or it is not just a re-export re port, you know, just as it is and we're just gonna throw it on there and say it's there. No, they took their time to make sure it runs on here. So all kinds of ported games. Bioshock the Collection just came out for it. Um, there's there's all kinds of series of games. Uh, Borderlands the Collection has come out on it. There, there's several classic games that we all love that are being ported to it. And a lot of them are remasters that are coming to it. So that, that to me is a really big reason, a game that you love or a game you never got to play before and now you're on your new console and you wanna be able to play it mobile or you you just want to have another way to enjoy that game to take it with you wherever you go. You, you can do that on the Switch. There are tons of game ports that are really great game ports. And let's just throw in here too, just the vastness of the library in general, that being said. There's 2,400 titles on the Switch, which is extremely impressive for its only three year run as a console. That's extremely impressive for how short it's run. Now there is a lot of like bloatware and cheapware, like not very good games. Um, in that, because they've made the they've made the eShop a pretty open platform to develop for. And it's easy to develop for. So, but there still are tons of great games. There's lots of YouTubers out there that do like top tens of the eShop like once every other month, something like that. So it's easy to figure out what's good on there and what's on sale on there, and what great games there are in there. So it's just so much more accessible to get the build a library of games that are good games that you're not going to go broke trying to get them all. So games both points three and point four of why I think you should get a Nintendo Switch. So first of all, portability, switchability, competitive and casual games, just the vastness of the library and ported games. And finally, cost. So I understand you can pick up like an original PS4, like a PS4 Slim or like the Xbox One S, you can pick them up for pretty cheap. I understand that. Um, so this actually in that scenario can or could be more expensive as the Switch is $299 and that is basically just this setup right here, like this plus the cables, just these. So just this is $299.
So it's not the cheapest console. It was when it first came out, but it's not the cheapest necessarily anymore but it's still a really great value. Like your PS4 Slim is not gonna have the portability that this does, the switchability this does, the, the all the other, you know, the, the games. I guess some of the games will be on both, but there's exclusives on this and just being able to play the games portable and the advantages to having games on here versus on those. So it, for I understand why their cost is where their cost is. They packed a lot of power into this little tiny thing. I mean, this outputs, this little tablet outputs 1080p 60 while in dock. Like that's just so impressive to me that they were able to do that. So for that package, that's great. They also now have the Switch Lite. So now the Switch Lite, just a couple disclaimers. For one thing, it cannot video output. So not only, it's not that it just doesn't come with a dock, like don't think, oh, there's USB-C on the bottom. USB-C does video, so it can just plug in, you know, USB-C dongle into the bottom. No, the chip that actually modulates the video output through USB-C is actually removed from the light. That's how they've made it so cheap as a portable. The screen also is smaller and it's not quite as nice. Like I've, um, I, sh I guess I should have brought it here and did a side-by-side -side comparison. Um, my wife's switch light in this, we've done side by side. The color's a little better on this. This is a little bit brighter screen. And this is just a version one switch too. This is not, this is not version two switch, which they, and they made the, um, the screen a little better, the battery life a little longer. It, it's slightly better than the V1. Even mine being a version one, it's noticeable how much better my screen is than hers. But they're only $199. So now you're at the same price range as those other consoles, but it's still portable. It plays all of the games and can use all these controllers. Now, the annoying thing is with it is you can't do tabletop. There's no kickstand on it. So unless you buy something to sit it, you can't really do a tabletop. It's portable only. But if you get a little kickstand for it and put on there, well, now you know you can get a pro remote connected to it and you can use your pro remote while you're playing Breath of the Wild, while you're playing Fortnite, while you're playing whatever in a tabletop mode. So if you're looking for just a strict portable, like you don't care about the switchability and you just wanna be able to have something that you can take it with you and play the entire library of Switch games on, Switch Lite for only $199. So the cost is super friendly. Um, they are kind of hard to find right now because everyone, a lot of people have been wanting to get them since they're cooped up at home. They want something that's portable that they can play on their couch or in their, you know, wherever, in their bedroom, wherever, be able to take it wherever they want in the house with them. It's, they're just great. They're, they just are, honestly. So those are my top five reasons. Portability, switchability, um, uh, both competitive and casual games. You have your ported games and just the vastness of the game library and you have the cost. So top five reasons why you should buy an Nintendo Switch. Thanks guys for joining me here on the channel. Like this video if you enjoyed the content. That's the number one thing that will help us in getting the channel promoted just on YouTube's platform. Please, if you have not subscribed and you're just watching this and, you just, and you've been watching me through this, please subscribe, hit the bell, um, join us on the channel so you'll get those updates every week. Please leave a comment below if you like this video. If you have any other um, top fives you'd like me to do, let me know below. If there's any games you'd like me to review, hardware you'd like me to review, let me know. I'll love to produce the content you guys want. So far, I've just been making whatever I want because I've not got much of that feedback from you guys. So please let me know. I will love to make anything on technology and video games I'd love to do. So just let me know in the comments. Um, on the games I'll play this summer, I've gotten some more votes, but not enough. So I'm gonna put up here the, uh, the card with the link to my top 10 games coming out this summer. Please go on there and comment from the list of games that are on the video. I will put them in the description even of that video to make it easy and this video. I'll put it in the description. I've not done that yet. I'm gonna make it easy for you guys because I only have like single votes for everything. I have a single vote for uh, Origami King, uh, Paper Mario. I have a single vote for SpongeBob. I have a single vote for Valorant. Um, there's a couple out there that I'll just stream just cause, like, but I, they're not in the top 10 list. Like someone asked for Warzone and uh, I mean, I, I already play Warzone. So if you guys want me to stream that, I will. But if whichever one of those games you pick, I will buy it this summer when it comes out and I will play it all the way through. Valorant's already out. So please go and vote, please go and vote. Cause if Valorant ends up being it, I can get that right now. So let me know guys, please go in that video. You can even do it in this video to make it simple. Simple comment on that list that's in the description below. 
which game you'd like me to buy and do a full playthrough, or just if it's a multiplayer like Valorant, just stream a lot through the summer, and I will gladly do that. So anyways, guys, thanks for joining me today, and thanks for supporting the channel. Thanks for commenting on the last video and liking it and pushing me to keep doing this. Love doing this. Love hanging out with you guys here on YouTube. And um, I don't know when I'll be, but hopefully I'll be on Twitch this weekend. I try to stream every Saturday and I will try doing that again this Saturday. And um, maybe we'll start streaming more throughout the week. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, check me out on Twitch at Turner Tech. Um, all my social media, find me on there at Turner Tech. I'm starting to get more active on there. I'm trying to posting a little bit more so you can follow me there. Once again, like, subscribe and comment. And I will see you guys next Friday.